Well, I am once again fashionably late for this month's Movie Nerds Club, but I couldn't stop joining in the fun of ranking my top 5 non-DCEU DC movies. Welcome back to another edition of Movie Nerds Club. If you're familiar at all with what this type of content is, go ahead and join me in the comments below and start the conversation on which are your top five non-DCU DC movies. And if you're new to this type of content and to my videos in general, thank you so much for clicking on this video and for checking out the channel. Why don't you consider clicking the subscribe button, it does wonders to get my content out there and you'll always be a part of more great content that I put out, as such as these conversations right here. Every month I join forces with a few of my friends and we're growing each month we got some new members this month as well and we've all ranked our top five non dcu dc movies i'll leave all of their links in the description so you can check their videos out as well and go and show them some love and tell them i sent you without any further ado no honorable mentions just my top five let's do this in at number five we got my favorite DC animated movie they have ever done. I know the popular opinion is Mask of the Phantasm, and I do love that movie. It would probably be my number six, Flashpoint would probably be my number seven, but Batman Under the Red Hood is just a cream of the crop for me. I just love this story. I loved it in the comics. I love this adaptation. I frigging love Bruce Greenwood as Batman. I think he's an underrated version of Batman. He's right up there next to Kevin Conroy for me. He's that good and I love the personal stakes in this story. I've always been a fan of Jason Todd. I've always been a fan of him dying and coming back as the Red Hood and I like that the film does just enough to keep it a mystery but it doesn't assume that nobody watching the film doesn't already know what this is and it plays with the consequences of that emotionally speaking towards Batman. We get to see Batman very vulnerable and how this Red Hood figure is haunting him and tormenting him because he knows all his weak spots because of how much he opened up to Jason Todd. I love how it involves the entire city of Gotham in a way that Red Hood is basically taking it all down because Batman quote unquote won't finish the job. I just love this film. I love how big in scope it is, but I love how personal it is thematically speaking for our hero Batman. I've always wanted a sequel to this movie. Death in the Family does not count. I still want to see a continuation of this story, even if they take it in a completely original route. That's how much I love this film. I think the animation is gorgeous. I think the score is very underrated. And I just want to see more of what happens next with these two, given the fallout at the ending of this film, which is in itself fantastic. Also, shout out to Neil Patrick Harris as Nightwing. <laughs> Coming in at number four, and you might consider this cheating, but it's not, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Oh, but it's set in the DCU, it's with the characters of the DCU. Warner Brothers says it's not canon, it says it's not in the DCU, it's another completely different timeline, so for the purposes of this video, it's not a DCU movie. It was extremely gratifying earlier this year to get to see Snyder's vision fulfilled. I'm always a fan of directors who can get their vision as it was intended out there. Even though sometimes I might not be interested in it, a cut, I think it's always great and it's always encouraging to see an artist that was able to put out there at least what they wanted for the audience. And I think Zack Snyder's Justice League is high up there in some of the best director's cuts ever. The film is long, but for me, it earns every single moment on screen. We get to see the characters in the Justice League shine, finally come together with some awesome fight sequences, the insane CGI on Steppenwolf, the improvement character-wise on Steppenwolf, and how the story actually really works and sets up a future that unfortunately we'll never see, but the fact that it gets you excited for that future is something special in itself. Not to mention the evolution of Cyborg, who was so uninteresting in the DCU version of this story, <laughs> and now he's so crucial 
for this story to work in the Snyder Cut. He is the heart and soul of the Justice League, not to mention some of the best moments we get from Henry Cavill's Superman, my personal favorite Superman. Not impressed. And we also get to do a deep dive on these characters. What brings them in to the Justice League? How do they interact? What do they all have at stake? I think this film really works and it's a beautiful showing of how much effort and love Zack Snyder put into all of this and the actors as well. And honestly, if this is the last time we get to see my favorite Superman on screen, I think he goes out on a high note, giving us some of the best, most iconic Superman moments we've ever gotten. Coming in at number three, and I only have the top three because I couldn't bring myself to cheat and put them all together, but I'm going to go at number three with The Dark Knight Rises. I've always loved this movie. I never got the hate. I understand if some people think it's the weaker of the three, but I love it. I love Bane as a villain. I think Tom Hardy is magnificent. I think he's the villain that took Batman the furthest. He actually defeated Batman. And not only that, he doesn't stop and takes everything away from Batman. He demolishes the political structure of his city. He destroys everything that Batman holds dear and ever swore to protect, that being Gotham and the people of Gotham. The most interesting thing about this film is that I keep thinking how different it would be if Heath Ledger unfortunately had not passed away, but this film still really works for me. I love the big all-out war at the end, a fight with Batman, fighting Bane, coming back from his back broken on that debilitating prison, his whole journey and arc to become Batman once again. I think this is one of those films that gets real personal personal, not only with Batman, but with Bruce Wayne himself. And I love the little additions of Joseph Gordon-Levitt as quote-unquote Robin. I love Anne Hathaway as Catwoman. She's incredible in this film. I don't think she gets enough love. I really just love this film. And if you guys know me, you've probably heard this before. I'm a big fan of finality. I'm a big fan of payoff, satisfying payoff to be specific. And this film does give me that personally. I love how it wraps up. I don't care how it does not make sense. It makes sense because he's Batman. He can make everything work. I love the ending of this film. I love how it caps off the trilogy and leaves it open for the legend of the Batman to continue in this world. Coming in at number two, what might be most people's number one, but I'll explain why it's only my number two in a bit, The Dark Knight. This film is kind of the jaws of its generation. It changed the way many people looked at blockbusters. Yes, they are fun, popcorn films to turn your brain off sometimes and those films have their place and their work and they're great in their own right. The Dark Knight elevates what a blockbuster can be. Not only that, it elevates what a superhero movie could be. I think the writing prowess, not only as story, but as character is concerned, is at an all-time high in this film. I love seeing how everything comes together. I'm a huge fan of when filmmakers can clearly show us that they're playing this chess game with themselves, putting all the pieces in place to use them when necessary, and The Dark Knight has a lot of those qualities. It arguably gave us one of the greatest villains in the cinema history, not to mention probably the best villain in any comic book movie in an iconic performance from Heath Ledger prior to his unfortunate death in The Joker. The best Joker we've ever gotten. The unpredictability, the eeriness of whenever he comes on screen, the jovial attitude that he carries while he tries to corrupt Gotham and more directly Harvey Dent. I love how Batman and Joker are positioned in this film as two opposite sides of the spectrum. The uncorruptible and the corrupter and Harvey Dent right in the middle. A person who only means to do good 
but it's as flawed as any of the criminals in Gotham City. And I love the ending of this film. I, I know that's cliche, that's not unexpected at all, but I love how it shows us that the hero Batman is willing to do anything to let Gotham, the city he loves, recover from the loss of Harvey Dent by the end. I think this is a great movie, obviously, but I think it's kind of beautiful as well. That is one side of the film that I don't see many people tackle. I think thematically, The Dark Knight is a beautiful film, and it's probably why it's one of the best, if not the best, comic book movie ever made. But not my number one, because I have a special place in my heart for... Batman Begins is my favorite DC movie not in the DCU. I prefer it to The Dark Knight and to The Dark Knight Rises for many reasons. It was the film that started the trilogy that did give us The Dark Knight. It was the film that started the trilogy that did give us that satisfying payoff and gratifying finale for this immense arc to Batman. I love how all the films connect thematically. Batman Begins is about Batman conquering his fear, The Dark Knight is about Batman controlling his chaos, and The Dark Knight Rises is obviously about him reconquering what he lost and winning back his city and his people. This was also the first Christopher Nolan movie I've ever seen and it's the movie that made me fall in love with him as a filmmaker and as a storyteller and why he's become my favorite director of all time, at least for right now. And honestly, this film, Batman Begins, not only did it bring back Batman from the slums after Batman and Robin, which was in the dumps, nobody respected Batman until Batman Begins came out, but also, this is one of the two movies, and I'll leave the other one for another day, this is one of the two movies that made me want to be a director. As soon as I saw Batman Begins, I realized what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, and that was make movies, telling stories. Batman Begins made me realize that, and it's why it holds such a special place in my heart, and it treated these characters, this insane comic book world, as something real, something that you could see yourself live in. Not only with its secret organizations with the League of Shadows and Ra's al Ghul, who Liam Neeson plays so freaking well. I love that little twist. I think it's a very underrated twist when it comes to best movie twists of all time. I love love Cillian Murphy as Scarecrow. He never gets to have a big role in any of the films in the trilogy, but I think he's very effective in this one. Batman Begins is just a very, very special movie because it could have gone very wrong. And even if it was as good as it is, there's a possibility we may have never gotten The Dark Knight or The Dark Knight Rises. But I think Batman Begins opened so many doors and showed us how seriously you could treat these properties and how emotionally resonant and compelling they could be with such real characters in such real worlds. Batman Begins opened all those doors for us. It opened the doors for The Dark Knight, for Zack Snyder's Justice League, Dark Knight Rise for the DCU, the MCU. I think it all started here. Even though we mostly recognize those doors opening in The Dark Knight, I think Batman Begins is a true champion of the modern day comic book movie. That is why it's my favorite Batman movie and my favorite DC movie, non-DCU. <laughs> And so those are my top five non-DCU DC movies. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Throw it all down there. Start the conversation. It's the most important part. And thank you so much for watching this video. I cannot wait to go down and watch everyone else's video. And I hope you do the same. All their links are in the description. Once more, thank you all for watching. We'll be back with Movie Nerds Club next month. And we'll have a very interesting topic to discuss. Thank you so much once more for watching. And if you're still watching but still haven't subscribed, consider clicking that button because if you're still watching, you enjoyed it on some level. I'll be back very soon with more reviews later today. I'll have my review up for Stillwater. And so until then, love each other and love the movies.